So if they wanted to make any drastic change, they had the chance to make a change. It would have been an intra-party change. Mr. Ram, bringing you in at this point, uh, do you feel that with the kind of analysis really that is uh, coming at the end of the day, on the day of the cabinet uh, reshuffle, do you think this sets the stage for yet another reshuffle, probably in the very near future? No, I don't think so, because that will look uh, very tame. Uh, as Vinod said, uh, I think th uh, probably this is it. I, 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 we can't rule out very minor changes, but no more reshuffles, I think, certainly not in the conceivable future. They've, they've done their best and it's not been good enough. But does it serve any purpose? I mean, the whole idea of a cabinet rejig was to make sure that the image gets better, things fall in place, people, you know, criticize less. I don't see any of that happening because of this uh, cabinet reshuffle. Mr. No, because uh, I think they miscalculated. They thought that programs like uh, this would praise them and give them very high marks. And uh, they have completely misread the public mood and the mood of it, the informed public as well. People Fine. like us. Finally, to my eminent panel of uh, journalists, a final a quick uh, closing remark on what you would say uh, to the Prime Minister's office and to the uh, nation at this point and what the Prime Minister really could have done differently. Very briefly, starting with you, Ms. Jairath. Well, I mean, as we've all said that it's been a great disappointment and uh, what I would have liked to see the Prime Minister do really uh, is, you know, th this whole issue of corruption. It's not just the DMK. There are several Congress ministers who also are under a cloud of corruption. If the Prime Minister wanted to send out a strong mes message on corruption, maybe he should have changed some of those ministers and put in some younger people or more effective people. There are plenty of talented people in the Congress. And I think that would have made a big difference to the image that he's battling, you know, the image that he needs to change. Uh, Mr. Mehta, uh, perhaps a, a word for the people, the ministers who have been booted out today. They would be really upset and sad. They need a little bit of your humor, sir. No, no. <laughs> I don't think they would be pacified by my humor. <laughs> but, you know, if you're a minister, you have to, you are not there for a lifetime. You, you must accept the fact that you are going to be chopped and chained, new people will come and especially if you are not performing, you will obviously have to be moved. But my, I would say to the Prime Minister that please have another reshuffle in six months. Have another reshuffle rather quickly because there's no rule which says you can only have one reshuffle a year or two reshuffles a year. The Prime Minister can reshuffle as quickly as he wants. So if the Prime Minister wants to bring his government back to health and present a new image to the thing, there's another, there are two and a half years left, so all is not lost. Finally to you, Mr. Ram, it's not just those who have been dropped, but also two uh, ministers who decided to boycott the swearing-in ceremony. Yes. Mr. Gurudas Kamath uh, and Mr. Jena, both of them are quite upset with the portfolios that have been given to them. They will no doubt be dealt with or it could be sorted out, but uh, it's a wrong message that the Prime Minister has sent. He's had plenty of time to get this right. It's a timid move. It's a move that smacks of compromise. It doesn't send out the message that they're out to cleanse the system or to raise the bar for policy making and governance. So it's very, very disappointing, notwithstanding a few bright spots like the induction of Milin Diora uh, uh, and so on. Uh, so I think uh, this is the wrong message to send and uh, we are very, very disappointed with the outcome. Mr. Mehta, I can't help like but say. ask your opinion on this uh, issue. The two ministers who decided to boycott the swearing-in. Well, you know, I think that uh, I don't want... They are, they, I mean, they are not very heavyweight ministers. Let's be quite frank about this. But I mean, I'm just wondering whether they had been told or that this was another lack of, uh, this was another piece of miscommunication. <laughs> I'm sure that the government or the Prime Minister's office must have told these people that this is what you're going to get. So if they are sulking now, they could have sulked earlier and made their protests earlier. So I, I am not sure, I am not sure but what is the validity of their sulking. But uh, I don't think we, we should be very worried about their sulking because they are not very... I mean, they are important, but they are not crucial ministers in this government. There are several new faces in this new cabinet on a day of the cabinet reshuffle. But has it really been a facelift? 
to our eminent panel of journalists. Thank you so much for joining us on the news hour this evening.